Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Another fresh episode today, 13 Days and Ways. One of God's ways that I am being deeply reminded of is that he brings to your remembrance the words that he has already spoken. Will you say yes to them as he brings them to your remembrance? Say no to the words filled with shame and defilement. Say yes to the word that God has written over you and the word that he wants to accomplish in you for your generation for why you live at this particular moment, in the particular place, and with the particular people that you are. And then let him take you into the future as you pass the tests that are happening presently right now. Say yes to him. Love you all. Thirteen days and ways as we continue to move towards 2024. In the previous episode, I talked about how the enemy comes with oftentimes such a vileness and such a depth of trying to revisit and to smear you again with shame. The words of defectiveness, the words of defilement, maybe from your past. Um, But I want to focus today on the only way that we combat any of the enemy's work is we must say what the Father has said what he is saying if we ever plan to live out that which the Father desires with us and in us and through us in our full oneness with him. So I'm revisiting the words that God has spoken to me over the years because I'm of the belief that they are still in the process of being Um, made real and becoming the word that God has spoken, being the message that God wants us to share, to preach, to tell, to live it out. Are we what we preach? This is a very provoking question that Watchman Nee asks in his book, Messenger of the Cross. Are we that message Do we keep pointing our fingers at other people and saying, you should do this and you should do that, and yet we do not allow God, right, to make real in us what he has spoken to us? Because long before we are a provoker to others, the word that God has spoken to us provokes us. Are we allowing him to make real in us? Or are we filled with shame so much that we can't take another inch of correction, which feels like criticism? We we can't be matured because we're constantly blaming others and pointing out to others, right? right? When God is speaking to us and we're saying yes to him, remember this is 33 days of yes, saying yes to him. And so I am revisiting, I am allowing him to stir again in me what he wrote over me before the foundations of the world, what he has been preparing me for with him. Always remember, number one, enter in for yourself, enter in for yourself at new depth. Say, yes, yes, I will continue. I will abide. I will remain with you and continue to enter in for myself. Then we begin to identify with the Father and what he wants to do in people's lives and in nations. My friends, we're told to go, not just sit, right? We are producers, right? He's producing his will inside of us. He is doing it. Will we identify with the Father? As Jesus matured, he identified more and more and more with his Father's business, with the word that God had sent him to be, with his assignment. And his whole life was preparation for a moment and time. I'm back again, allowing him literally to swirl in me and around me 
the words that he has spoken to me. And I see, wow, (laughs) yes, they have been and yes, they are, but oh, what they will be. We must understand that our rich history with him has been preparation, I believe, for things that and decisions that we are in right now and things that are to come. Whether you are 75, 82, 55, 25, 15, whatever the age, stay with him in this. And one of the words he has been bringing back to me among many, and this is what I'm going to to share um, over these next few episodes, I believe, of continuing to say yes, that I'm continuing to say yes to the word that he has written over me, to the words that he has spoken to me, what he's had to make real inside of me, because I was the first one who needed the word. And then he says, now pass this on as I walk you deeper and deeper into uh, what you and I are going to do together. And one of those words that he's been reminding me of is, is a word that came to me when I was at a large conference years ago. And I knew how distracted I was by looking at, ooh, look who's here, look who I'm among, look who I'm with, I was invited here. All of these things that can cause us to forget why there is favor upon us. God is so reminding me that many of the testings that we are living through right now is we are being tested, if you will, as we ascend the mountain. Because, my friends, if we cannot pass the test at at each point as we go, as we mature, will we remain loyal and faithful to him? Or will we get caught up in the machine, get caught up in the machine that I believe becomes a monster, right, where we compromise We compromise. We forget why we have been placed where we are. And when we forget why we've been placed where we are, we begin to make it about us rather than him. His purposes, this hour of history, the generations that we serve, we start living unto ourselves, and, you know, surely God would want me to be happy. My friends, God wants you to be content and satisfied only in him. This is a very provoking time. And saying yes to why he put you in the rooms he put you in and with the people that he put you with. But you see, we have to be dealt with all along the way, the ascension, if you will, as we are continuing to climb that mountain so that when we get there, we'll serve the purpose at the top of the mountain of why we went. We'll be willing to descend, to go down again into the valley, right? And we will not get lost along the way. And so I was in this room and I knew I was being distracted, I knew how I had been so deeply distracted and allowed such defilement to come in in seasons past. And God was giving me opportunity to come into this place with him and now to be able to go with him and be sent by him, all these things that we say. But they must have their practical preparation, their practical living out. And so to combat that, the only thing I knew to do was that I was like, Lord, I'm, I, I walked up to the, the, the platform where people were worshiping and, and all, and I got right in front of one of these very large speakers. And so the worship music and all was coming out so much so it was, I could feel almost the vibration of it. But I stood there because I was like, I don't want to be distracted by these other things. Father, I... I'm here for you. And as I was there, I had an experience, a vision, whatever you might want to call it, uh, that was very, very real. And when I opened my eyes, I could see the feet of Jesus. And there was a scepter that was being extended to me, an authority. 
and I was a little bit shaken, (laughs) to say the least. But this is the word that I heard him speak to me as he, as he extended that scepter of authority to me. See, my friends, I'm sharing this because many times we forget things along the way. Isn't that amazing that we can forget <laughs> visions of God with God when he speaks? And it's, it's not that I've forgotten it and that I've never thought of it again since then. I have. But in this season, what I'm saying to you is that he's bringing back many things that he has spoken to me, and I'm going to assume he's bringing back many things that he's spoken to you. Because in the midst of shame-filled words that try to come and cancel out what God has spoken to make you feel so smeared with dung, so full of shame, that that you would quit, that you would walk off, that you would seek your happiness somewhere else, with someone else, that you would stop the assignment, that you would shut down, that you would walk off, right? I'm saying to you, in those moments comes a gripping by Holy Spirit within, and he says, remember what I have said. And what he said to me in that moment was, as you worship you will rule. As you worship, you will rule. And I found that my hands were lifted high. They were extended with my full palms open. But then there came this moment where as I worship, my left hand remained open, full palm, while my right hand became like a fist as though I was holding, and I was, a scepter of authority, that as we worship, see, we've allowed worship to become a song. We've allowed worship to become, you know, an experience rather than the sons of the living God worship him. He is our only source. He is the full, the full view that we live in. He has my full heart, no longer a divided allegiance. I worship him in spirit and in truth. And God said, and as that worship comes, then you will begin to rule in the heavenly. See, we've made worship about so many other things. And we may even hear ourselves say things like, I just didn't really like the worship today. Well, my friends, it wasn't for you. Hmm? The worship isn't for us. But in real worship, we hear him, we see him, we begin to receive instruction from him. I appreciate great worship music, but is there a worship that goes on within you, a worship of him? You are my all in all. You are the wellspring. You are the only fountain. Break open in me. You see, and as we worship him, we will rule. Can we handle the scepter of authority that he's put in our hand? The authority of his people, the authority of the believer, the authority of his church. Do we understand this authority? Do we think we're some militant organization to just go out and tear people up? No, my friends, but we are here to see the open heaven that has been true since the cross. Jesus has made an open heaven where we can behold him with an open face in bold, confident, full 24 7 access, but will there be an open people in the earth so that that open heaven and the open people in the earth can crush the enemy in the atmosphere so that that which is really true can begin to break out everywhere in culture? That's not for a, just a glory meeting inside the church house. You see, there is a house that he is building. And I'm being deeply reminded of things that he has spoken, that he has told me, and that he has been making me. And he now says, it's 
time. And he's about to bring some things together. And I am going to assume he is doing the same in you. Will you say yes to the word and words that he has spoken to you over the years? There are many that may have fallen by the wayside. But then there are those ones that just continue to rise up. They continue to grip you because they're of him. They weren't just the words of men or the words of your friends or the words of your parents. Let every curse fall to the ground because of the cross of Jesus Christ and his finished work. And let every word of the Father rise up in you today and grip you. And you say, yes, Father, yes to what you have spoken. Yes, Say yes to him, my friends, and be encouraged today, you see, because we can't forget why we've been placed where we are, with whom we are, and the connections that are to come. You see, this happened with Esther. She was prepared. She was positioned by Mordecai. There is no Esther without Mordecai. She got up in that palace in all her beauty and somewhat forgot why she was there. And Mordecai's voice said, remember, right? Remember why you have come into the kingdom. It's for such a time as this. It's actually inside a rebuke. These famous words that oftentimes we make so full of flowers. And, you know, it's like it was inside a rebuke. Because he said, if you don't live out, basically live out the reason why you are there, you perish with us. This was about the survival of the people of God. She was positioned to expose the enemy and to bring him down so that her people could fight, right? So that they might prevail. My friends, we cannot forget why we've put in, been put into places and relationship connections. There is a favor upon us, and we need to remember why. We go in on the behalf of God before kings and nations. So there you have it for today. And I pray the next episodes will stir you. Say yes to the words he has written over you and say hell no to the words of shame and defilement that have come and that continue to whisper. And do not dare think that anything of hell and flesh and sin and the demonic has anything to do with you. By the work of Christ on the cross, by what he has done, you have been severed forever from hell. Now live like it and say yes to the Father. I love you all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.